we're pleased to be hosting today's presentation. Once again, Good Mental Health is Ageless. Hazel Quinones is an outreach and education staff member of the Health and Community Engagement Team at the County of San Diego, Health and Human Services Agency, Aging and Independent Services. Hazel has her bachelor's degree in social work and communication studies, and she has her master's degree in social work. Hazel has worked with diverse populations, children and families, adults, and now working with older adults, persons with disabilities and caregivers. Hazel has a passion for helping others through education and community involvement. She also enjoys caring for her family, hiking, and hopes to travel more. Hazel is an outreach and education staff member of Aging and Independent Services. She has her bachelor's degree in social work and communication studies, and she has her master's degree in social work. Hazel has worked with diverse populations, like I said, older adults, caregivers, and um, and with that, I actually wrote that twice. So there you go. You're really uh, up to speed with Hazel at this point. Uh, so without further ado, Hazel, I'm going to um, ask Andrew. I think he's going to bring the slides up, and I'm going to turn it over to you. And once again, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, um, Mark. And um, Andrew, would you mind going to the first slide, please? Thank you so much. All right. Um, so again, good morning, everyone. And um, I'm Hazel Quinones. And you've heard us say it again, but we I'm with the County of San Diego Health and Human Services Agency, Aging and Independence Services. And today we'll be discussing um, mental health, older adults, um, and I'll be sharing some tools and resources um, that you can use if you're ever seeking help. Next slide, please. So if you have seen a presentation from um, AIS, one of my other colleagues, maybe Matthew um, or Annabelle, you've probably seen this slide, but we do like to share our County of San Diego vision which is the Live Well San Diego, um, which is just the county's vision that focuses on healthy, safe, and thriving communities for all of San Diego County. And organizations can become a Live Well San Diego partner when they support this vision. And individuals can participate in the Live Well San Diego vision as well by getting involved in our partners programs or attending our Live Well San Diego events. So for more information, please visit our website and we'll show you the website after the presentation so you can kind of see how to navigate through that. Next slide, please. One of the annual signature Live Well San Diego events is Check Your Mood Day. And Check Your Mood Day focuses on the importance of mental health screenings, raising awareness and sharing resources for mental health. This place, um, this event takes place every October, but the resources are, are available all year round on our website, livewellst.org slash check your mood. And we'll show you um, how to navigate that website after the presentation. Next slide. And so we want to be able to educate people on what mental health is, how it affects people and their loved ones. And I believe that when we know about mental health, we can notice signs or symptoms and we may be able to help others. And when we have this awareness, this can help those with a mental health illness to become more comfortable talking about it and have more confidence in themselves. And we want to help prevent isolation and loneliness and remove that negative stigma that comes with talking about mental health sometimes. And May is Mental Health Month and this green ribbon represents mental health awareness. So if you don't know, um, if you see someone with the lime green ribbon, that's what it stands for. And next slide, please. Thanks. 
And this important fact is from the World Health Organization that depression is the leading cause of disability worldwide. And so this is just important to know that, you know, mental health issues are not only affecting um, people here in the US, but all over the world. And there are various types of mental health issues that affect older adults. We're only touching on these three in the presentation, anxiety, cognitive impairment, and depression. So first, anxiety is um, basically there's different forms. There's social anxiety, phobias, post-traumatic stress disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and um, anxiety can be characterized by persistent and excessive worry about a number of different things. So people may be overly concerned with money, health, family, or work. I feel like many people feel like this, especially during this past year, um, but people who have anxiety worry more and may expect the worst event to happen, even when there might not be like an apparent reason for concern. And so um, the second one, cognitive impairment, this has to do with memory, judgment, learning, language, or other functions of the brain. And cognitive impairment or cognitive decline in older adults um, could be temporary or it could be more permanent. Um, it just depends on the underlying causes or cause. And some causes of um, cognitive impairment or decline may include a side effect from a medication. It could be changes or imbalance of hormones, a psychiatric illness such as bipolar disorder or psych uh, schizophrenia or other mental illness, and um, also damage to brain neurons or even an infection can cause cognitive impairment. So if you do notice any signs or, of changes or if you feel a concern about one's memory, judgment, or learning abilities, you can request a screening from your primary care physician. And then the third one, depression. This is more than just a feeling of feeling sad or blue. Um, it's a common but serious mood disorder. It can cause severe symptoms that can affect a, person, a person's feelings or how they think and how they handle daily living activities, such as sleeping, eating, or working. And depression is common among older adults, but it's not a normal part of aging. Uh, because of important life changes that can happen as we get older, this can cause feelings of uneasiness, stress, and sadness. So for example, a death of a loved one, dealing with a serious illness, maybe going from work to retirement, it can um, take time to adjust and regain, you know, uh, emotional balance after great life changes. But if someone has a more difficult time with the adjustment, then um, that's when depression can develop. So next slide, please. So it may be difficult to recognize signs just because it can vary from person to person. Um, so I'm gonna be sharing some of these signs uh, in the next couple slides. So first one, having lack of energy, poor concentration. Um, for example, if someone is having a hard time getting up in the morning or um, maybe they're sleeping too much, maybe they're overtired. Um, those could be signs. If someone is not able to complete a task that they're usually able to do, you know, they're having trouble focusing or concentrating, that could be a sign. Trouble managing money, budgeting, overspending, spending on um, things that might not be necessary. 
those could also be signs um, because if they're not using their money wisely, maybe they um, are shopping on QVC or um, or just overspending on regular um, things that are not necessary. And then when it comes to paying their rent or groceries, then they may not have enough money for that. So that could definitely be a sign. Um, changes in mood, like being easily upset, confused, or afraid. Those are things to look out for as well. And changes in eating and sleeping habits are also really important to look out for if someone is overeating or maybe they have a um, really intense loss of appetite. You notice that, you know, they're skipping meals or refusing to eat. Those could be really important. And then sleeping, sleeping too much isn't good or having a lack of sleep isn't too good. So you really wanna make sure that um, you have that balance. And um, more signs could be um, spending little or no time with friends or um, staying alone. So there's um, a big difference between wanting your alone time and you know being introverted then um, isolating yourself and really avoiding others. Um, so, you know, uh, if you have a friend that you haven't seen in a while or haven't talked to in a while, maybe give them a phone call or a text. Um, so just check up on them. Uh, feelings of hopelessness, feeling overwhelmed, those are um, definitely big signs. Poor hygiene, um, you know, if you kind of notice someone hasn't like taken a shower in a couple of days, they look like they haven't changed their clothes. Um, those could be signs as well, because, you know, if they're not caring about themselves, um, it could be very dangerous. And lack of medical care, maybe they're avoiding their doctor, um, or, you know, they may be avoiding their doctor for a certain reason. Maybe they don't want them to know what's going on with their health or whether it's physical health or emotional health. And then the last one here, misuse of alcohol and substance use. Um, this one is really important because uh, there could be harmful interactions and it could be fatal. Next slide, please. And when depression or anxiety or um, another mental health illness gets very severe, it can lead to some suicidal thoughts. So um, I thought it's very important to watch out for these signs as well. For older adults, we've seen um, that sometimes they start to give away their possessions. Maybe they start saying their goodbyes. Um, misusing or hoarding medications, another one that could be very fatal. Isolation is a very big one because, especially within the last year, you know, everyone was staying home and it was hard to, you know, see our loved ones or friends. So um, that's another one. And then feelings of hopelessness, helplessness, feeling that anxiety, feeling reckless. Um, maybe, you know, they haven't been taking care of themselves or you've just been seeing that they haven't cared. So, um, yeah, those are some other signs to look out for. And I know mental health isn't the easiest topic to discuss, and it may be difficult for someone to ask or seek for help. So, I mean, I know for myself, it's difficult for me to admit when I feel overwhelmed and I need help. So when it comes to seeking help for mental health conditions, we have seen that there are certain barriers that one may come across. And so the first one that we've seen is being in denial. If someone um, is embarrassed or they're ashamed, they wanna keep this private, um, that's usually the first reaction. You know, you don't want anyone to know that you're having problems. So, you know, if you're asking someone, how are you feeling? They might just say, I'm fine, I'm fine. And um, really it's, it's hard to be able to help someone 
or seek help when you know you are telling yourself that you're okay. Um, the second one, fear of loss of independence. We've seen this with you know older adults or persons with disabilities. They may not want people to know that they're struggling with a mental health illness because they don't want them to be treated differently or think that they're not having the capabilities to do certain things. So um, that's definitely a real fear. And um, also with different cultures, ethnicities, me mental health could be a taboo topic that you know people just don't talk about. So it could be uh, di difficult to ask for help when you know you grew up not talking about this openly. And then that negative stigma, um, we really want to stay away from those negative words saying someone's crazy or you know thinking a person is weak because they have a mental health illness. You know, uh, depression or any other type of mental illness, it's not um, a sign that someone's weak or that they're flawed. Um, it's a real um, illness. And not knowing where to turn to, not knowing where to get help could be another barrier just because, you know, if you, are able to admit that you know you do want to seek help but you don't know where to turn it could be very overwhelming and um, people may also be concerned with not having insurance you know what is treatment how do i get access to appropriate care um, there's a lot of questions around that so you know one of the main reasons why we do this presentation is to share the resources that's here locally in San Diego and um, ways to reach out. So the next slide is um, one of the tools that we share. This is our Check Your Mood self-assessment. And uh, this is a screening tool that you can do on your own. You can do it in the privacy of your own home. Um, so you would uh, answer these two questions. It just says, over the last two weeks, how often have you been bothered by any of the following? The first one is having little interest or pleasure in doing things. And then the second one is feeling down, depressed, or hopeless. So you would answer the question on this uh, rating scale here. And then at the bottom, it does tell you how to score yourself. And this is also just to let you know uh, we don't use this tool to diagnose anyone. This is um, a way for a person to monitor their own mood and their own emotional health. And um, we recommend these tools for those who are 18 and over. And um, yeah, so if you feel like, you know, this is something that you could use. Um, it is available on our website and we'll show you um, at the end of the presentation how you can access this. But, you know, if you take the screening and you're concerned about your results, um, we would suggest that you can share, the, share your results, share your feelings with someone that you trust, whether it's a friend, a family member, a doctor, an advisor that you have, you know, it's up to you to share it who, with who you'd like to. And then this is another um, self-assessment and it's um, the full version for older adults. And it might be hard to see this on the screen, but, um, it is available, actually, I'm not sure if this one's available on the website, but we can um, try to see if we can share it somehow, if you'd like a copy of this. Um, but this one for older adults is 15 yes or no questions. And then at the bottom, it also tells you how to calculate your score. And um, if you'd like a copy of this presentation, you can receive it. And on the right side of this, slide is the full version of the check your mood assessment that's for anyone 18 and over. 
And so um, you can click on the link right there. And then some other first steps that you can take when seeking help, um, as I mentioned, you can share your feelings with a friend or a family member. Um, you know, they may not notice some signs that you're seeing, or maybe they're the ones bringing it up to you because they notice the signs. Um, so it's not an easy first step, you know, but um, it could be one of the um, first steps that you can take. Um, other things you can do is talk to a doctor or a um, healthcare professional and see if, you know, if they are able to discuss any treatment options with you. Um, you can request an evaluation um, or even just talk about how you're feeling and, um, you know, they can recommend any type of services or program. And then the, um, the resources that I have listed here on the right side. So the first one at the top is the website for uptosd.org. And this is a website uh, and they have a lot of mental health literature, um, some really great reading material on different types of mental health illness and um, uh, also uh, for different populations, so whether you're um, an older adult or family or um, uh, or children, they have um, a lot of different literature. And then we also have the Access and Crisis line, which is open 24-7. So it's really easy to remember the phone number because it's just 888-724-7240. If you um, need someone to talk to, if you're having a bad day, you can call this number and um, the professionals on the line can give you counsel. They could just be there to listen to you to talk. Um, and if you are looking for a place to go to to receive mental health um, services, they can also refer you, give you recommendations for things in your area or services that you're looking for. And then, um, sorry, one last thing on that page is the National Crisis Text Line. So if you don't feel comfortable talking to someone, maybe you'll feel more comfortable texting, but uh, you could use this line, text hello to 741741, and um, you can get, uh, counseling or referrals over the phone, over text. And then next slide, um, knowing the difference between your natural feelings and when you start to get overwhelmed or overly worried or feeling that constant sadness, just knowing the difference between those feelings is really important. Um, having good mental health doesn't mean that you won't ever feel sad or lonely or nervous, but, and um, those are natural feelings, but when those feelings intensify and they start to disrupt your life or go longer than two weeks, then there might be a bigger problem. So um, now I'd like to share some self-care tips that maybe you can use if you're ever feeling down or stressed out. So um, first, connecting with family and friends. Um, I know for many people, it was very difficult to do this um, during the pandemic, but um, as things are opening up and you know folks are getting vaccinated, I think it's um, easier for us now and even if you're not able to do it physically there's still phone calls texts you know um, virtual meetings facetime so anything that you can do to just connect and catch up with someone um, other things you could do get outside and turn off your electronics i know those two are really big for me i really enjoy logging off my computer, you know, moving, like putting my phone down and just taking a walk outside, um, spending time with my family outside. 
Um, eating well is another one, you know, maintaining that um, healthy, balanced diet is um, really important. Um, helping others is another way that you can take care of yourself because when you're volunteering, taking care of others, it could help you lift your spirits as well. Um, other ways to take a break is stay physically active, um, getting enough sleep, meditate, listening to music or dancing if you like doing that. Really the most important thing that you do is take time to do the things that you enjoy. So um, I know that people have taken on different hobbies during the pandemic, like baking, gardening, home improvement, or organizing. Um, so hopefully you have a hobby um, that you like to do that you know you you enjoy. That's for yourself, and um, you could use that as a way for you to de-stress. And then um, the, these last few slides are just some examples of preventative activities that we've hosted. Um, this is, of course, pre-COVID times, these photos. So we just have some examples here of a health fair, an educational um, event that we put on for older adults. We have photos from our intergenerational games. Um, our gardening volunteers and also our volunteers that uh, work with the fire department and police department. Uh, and then physical health, um, as I mentioned, you know, anything that you can do to keep your body active, whether it's biking, taking a walk, Tai Chi, dancing, um, taking care of your physical health. Um, is really important because that is connected to your emotional health. And um, so anything you could do to keep your body um, healthy and active, um, maintain that good nutrition, get your routine medical care, um, taking care of yourself physically is very important for our mental health. And connecting spiritually, we know that spirituality can play an important role in our mental health. So if you do practice the faith, um, that's great that, you know, hopefully you have people that you can connect with that have the same values and um, beliefs as you. Next one, socialization, very important and um, really just hopefully that you'll you'll be able to do this safely um you know with friends loved ones you know getting together for coffee or lunch visiting someone who you haven't seen in a while um you know any anything that you can do to keep that interaction with others and um engage socially is really important for our mental health and then this last one here is for our pet lovers, animal lovers, because we know that pets um, really are part of our family. They can help us with our mental health. They are our companions. And I think um, animals just generally make people happy. So uh, yeah, this can be a really um, important part of our mental health. And then I just wanted to end with this quote. It says, when I is replaced by we, even illness can become wellness. So um, really having a healthy mind is just as important as having a healthy body. And um, I hope that you are able to, you know, find your own ways that you cope and um, keep yourself healthy um, emotionally and physically as well. And then um, just the next slide is some resources, some quick uh, links that you can uh, click on. Um, if you get a copy of this uh, PowerPoint, then I believe you'll be able to click on these links uh, directly. And then just some references that we use to make this presentation. 
And then this is my contact information. My name is at the very top there. Um, and you could always email me, um, hazel.quinones at sdcounty.gov if you have any questions. And uh, my other colleagues, Annabelle and Matthew, are also on here. Um, and we are the outreach and education team for AIS. So if you have any other groups that you'd like to um, have us speak at, please contact us and let us know. And that's it. Does anyone have any questions, comments? Uh, well, I have one and you actually already answered it. Um, on the PowerPoint, the sharing of the uh, PowerPoint. Um, there's two ways we could do this. It's your choice, of course, which you think might be easier for folks. Um, uh, I was going to bring up the Live Well San Diego website and, and let you point out some of the great resources that you uh, referenced in your pre presentation. Um, but I also want to show folks that they can, um, they can, first I'll let them bring this up real quick. Just give me a second here. Another way you can get it is you can just email us at resdeck at resdeck.net. Real simple, just feel free to shoot us an email and we will be happy to uh, give you a copy of the presentation. The other thing I will do is now bring up the website I was referencing. So this is the Live Well San Diego website and there's just a wealth of resources um, on here. Hold on one second, I'm gonna have to mute somebody here. Can I ask, uh, there's, I, I hear some background noise. Can I ask the person that is not muted to mute? That would be great. Thank you very much. So here's the Live Well San Diego website, livewellsd.org. Um, when you get there, take your mouse and hover over news and events, go down to check your mood, and you'll actually be able to see some of the things that um, Hazel referenced in her, power, in her PowerPoint presentation. Uh, the check your mood self-assessment, um, there's a toolkit, community resources. Hazel, did you want to point out anything in particular? Yes, can you click on the toolkit, please? Yep. So yeah, once you get to this toolkit page, um, we under the green section, we have a resource list. So that has a lot of information about different um, programs and mental health services. And then we also have that in uh, Spanish. And then we have our self-care tips. So that is very similar to the 10 ways to take a break that I mentioned in the presentation. And then at the very bottom, we have ways to engage for older adults. And these are um, some suggestions for resources on ways to socially engage um, while doing it safely from your home. And um, you may have heard about this before if Annabelle has mentioned it, but we, uh, this is a great resource that really anyone can use. It's not just for older adults. And then, um, if you're into social media, we do have a social media toolkit that has some great um, information. It has great like images that you can just post. And, um, and then the blue section here is more about county behavioral health services. And then um, at the very bottom where it has patient health questionnaires, this is where you can download the Check Your Mood self-assessment and um, the two question versions. So we do have it in English and other threshold languages. Great. Uh, and while you were uh, giving us a little background on this, we actually had another question come in. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about SAD or seasonal affective disorder and where does it lie in all of this? Seasonal affective disorder? Um, I'm not exactly too sure. I don't want to give the wrong information. So um, I could look up the answer and get back to you at a maybe later today. Sure. And then I could send it out um, to uh, the person that asked the question as well. Yes. I'd be happy to do that. Um, I, I would just like to add in, in listening to your presentation and seeing all the information that's there. I think when you see that stat, that the, it's the number one leading cause of disability in globally, you know, it really reminds you of the stigma of, of depression and what prevents us from recognizing that as a truly debilitating um, health concern for so many millions of people. 
And so to re remind us all of that, I think is, was huge and, uh, and very important. And um, just the self-care aspect, it's been so difficult uh, for the past year plus in terms of learning how to deal with the pandemic and how do we, how we get caught in our little isolation bubbles and, and how, do we, how do we best reach out to folks. Um, and you just cannot learn this information enough in terms of how it can be uh, supportive to you, to all of us. So I just wanna thank you um, for that. And then if anybody else has any other questions, um, if not, we will um, uh, say thank you very much, Hazel. You did a great job. Um, we want to thank everybody that joined us today. And um, like I said, I will, um, let me just make sure I have the person. Yes, I do have the person's name. I'm going to make a note of that and I will get back to you with the question that you asked. Uh, and Hazel will uh, get back to me a little bit, bit later that and then I will forward it on to you. So once again, oh, one more question, Hazel. Did you, is there a way to access the power, your PowerPoint on, on a website or should you think the, just asking us to send them a copy at resdeck at resdeck.net would be sufficient? I think um, getting it from you. I don't okay. have it posted um, okay. anywhere online. So Great. yeah, we we'll can send it. So, so once again, it's just resdeck at resdeck.net. Um, and request the PowerPoint presentation. We'll send it to you. It's a PDF version and uh, we'd be happy to forward it along. So I wanna thank everybody again for joining us. I wanna thank Andrew, who's always in the background there um, and did a great job with the slides and, um, and also always helping me get prepared from a technology standpoint because you know I just love technology. He knows that. Um, and uh, and wanna thank everybody and hope everybody has a great day. And I'm gonna end the meeting at this point. And remember, don't forget to go to uh, the ResDeck YouTube channel um, and tell your friends about this great presentation we saw today and all the others that are posted there and future ones. It should be up in the next day or two. Um, so feel free to go and check that out. Thanks again, Hazel. Take care, everybody. All right. Thank you.